friends. So this week's theme has been on alignment and really thinking about uh, the way that the body, my body, can accept a pose versus resist a pose. And can I, when I notice that there's resistance, can I align myself in another way that my body can accept the pose more fully, with more ease, with greater benefits? So what I'm gonna do today is a very different style of practice where I'm gonna move into six postures in order to kind of feel my way in and show some different aspects and talk through some different aspects of alignment. And maybe while I do this, you will join me in some play in order to sort of feel your way into your own body, the, the aspect of acceptance and resistance and aligning yourself in a way that feels like your body can accept the posture, okay? So let's start off first in our standing mountain posture. Now, from here, I'm gonna to turn to face the side so that I can start to really right away align myself into an awareness of strength. So I'm gonna draw myself upward in stability. Draw myself upward, draw upward through the inner arches of the feet, inner thigh muscles really engage, but then I'm going to release. So my inner hip bones, front inner hip bones, almost draw toward each other from an engagement across the pelvic floor muscles. And I'm gonna let my sits bones, these bottom bones at the base of my, of my pelvis in the back, start to open up a little bit, sp spread wider. So then I can feel a really stable, solid base in my legs. From here, I'm gonna move into standing forward fold. And I'm gonna make sure I have blocks available for this. So I'm gonna start off and place my hands onto blocks. And right away, I can feel resistance in the back of my legs. So I'm gonna straighten my legs and, and there even more resistance and start to feel a sense of even more resistance. Now, if I drop myself down lower, blocks a little lower, or all the way to the ground, I can feel even more resistance. Resistance at the back of my legs, resistance across the back of my neck. Maybe you also can feel this resistance here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put my hands back onto the blocks and I'm gonna engage my inner thigh muscles again. I'm gonna put a little tiny bend in the knees and then pull upward through the inner thighs, pull upward through the low belly and start to lengthen my spine a bit. So now with that little bit of a bend in the knees and the engagement of the muscles around the backs of my legs, I can feel some of that resistance starting to let go. Now I've been here for a little bit too, for a few breaths. So now I can feel that my hands are ready to come back to the ground because that resistance has started to ease up. Now I can feel it again at the backs of my legs, some of that resistance. And what I'm gonna do now again is I'm going to keep that little bit of a bend in my knees and pull upward through the inner thigh muscles and upward through the low belly. Now I'm starting to feel that resistance move just a little bit, a little more space. I've realigned myself again. Now my body is ready to go in here, maybe even to the point where I could grab a hold of the backs of my shins or my calves or to the ankles and draw into a little bit of a deeper exploration by engaging my arm muscles. So I'm just gonna stay for one more breath. Now that I've found a place, I've aligned myself in a way that my body is accepting this pose. Take a full breath in the place that you found and a long breath out, and then rise back up halfway if you're still there with me. Bring your hands to your hips and come all the way up and out of that posture. Good, now I just take a moment to pause and feel the effects of this pose, and I can feel the backs of my legs really awake now. So I'm gonna move from here into warrior two. So for warrior two, I'm gonna step my legs apart, 
So this is posture number two. And I'm gonna move this block off to the side here so I have it handy here in a moment. But I'm gonna start off with my legs in the five-pointed star position in which the arms are over top of the feet. And then from here, I'm gonna turn my right toes straight to the front of the mat. Now, in alignment, an alignment of this posture would be to bend the front knee and bring the front knee over the top of that ankle. Now, maybe for me, what I find is that I'm starting to feel a little pressure in my back knee when I push too far forward. So then I'm going to realign my pelvis. I'm going to feel my way into the place where my shoulders are over my hips and really pull up through the inner thigh muscles. Now, maybe you too press into the ball of the front right foot and push into the pinky edge of your back left foot and then explore whether or not leaning forward a bit more or staying a little lifted through the inner thigh muscles gives you more, more room to explore and find a really stable alignment here. Now if I engage through my low belly, then I start to lift up out of the pelvic floor as well and my pelvic floor isn't doing quite as much work. Then I find that I can actually lean into the posture a little bit deeper here and then I feel a bigger stretch. Now everything's definitely working but it's working with ease where I can breathe and fix my gaze down my front right hand for one more breath in and out. Good. Then I'm going to come out of that posture and release the front leg and turn to the other side and anytime we have a pose that we do asymmetrically meaning we do one side at a time it's possible that what you're going to discover is your own asymmetries. So for me here now, this, this side is different right away. I'm feeling the pressure in the front knee and rather than in the opposite leg. So for here then, in order to cultivate some strength around the front knee, I'm going to make sure that I'm pulling upward through that front inner thigh muscle. So I want to engage as if I'm trying to drag the front foot toward the back rather than pressing the shin forward. So it's a different engagement this time so that again, I can find an alignment where I can be peacefully working. Working, but not to the place where I know that there might be injury I'm cultivating. Take a full breath in with me and a long breath out and then I'm going to move out of posture number two. Good. Now I'm just going to take a moment again to feel my way into this pose. So this is not a flow practice, like I said. And instead, it's giving me the opportunity to observe. What does, the, what does my body tell me after I've left the pose is really important information that talks to me about whether or not I was pushing past some resistance that I should have listened to more carefully and found another way to align myself. Constantly asking myself, what am I aligning to? Am I aligning to an aesthetic of how something looks or, if, or am I aligning myself to the place for my body where I can experience the most benefits? Okay, posture number three is going to be triangle pose. So I'm going to set up with these blocks again. So I'm going to step my feet back into the five-pointed star position and start with my right foot forward. I'm going to place the block behind my right foot and just leave the, the other block at the other side. So from here now, right away, I'm going to make sure I'm not aligning myself to a locked front knee. So my leg is straight, but I want to make sure that even though the leg is straight, that I'm not locking the knee all the way back in place. For me, this feels like a better, more stable place when I push into the front right foot. So try that maybe. Then engage the inner thigh muscle again by trying to pull the front inner thigh upward. At the same time, I'm gonna activate like I'm trying to pull the two feet back toward each other. Then arms come out to shoulder height. 
I'm gonna draw my front right hip toward the back of the mat as my right hand goes forward. And then I'm gonna make sure I'm also engaging through my low belly to protect the lower back region. Inner thighs are still engaged. I haven't checked out there. I'm pulling upward through the inner thighs. Now I'm gonna place my hand on a block and extend my left arm upward. So for here, for me, this alignment is actually making my shoulder do a little bit too much work with my hand that high. So I'm gonna take my hand down a little bit lower. Now I could take my hand all the way down to the ground, but as soon as I do, I feel some resistance at my top left hip here, which is okay, but I do feel some more ease. I can align myself to more ease if I place the block underneath my front hand, engage through the low belly, and then stretch out through the back of the skull so that the crown of the head and my tailbone are in, align with the, in alignment in one line with each other. Taking in a full breath so I can experience the pose and breath out. And then I'm gonna rise back up. Turn my foot to the side, pause for a moment. I feel all of the blood rush through my whole entire body. There's no places in my body where I feel any tension. I want to pay particular attention to the sacrum, to that middle spot in the pelvis at the back. And if I'm feeling or into the knees or any place in the ribs, any place or in the back of the neck where there might be some residual tension after you've left the posture and notice if that's the case. And if it is, then maybe think about side two being a little bit different. So again, I'm going to start with my left toes turning toward the short end, end of the mat, arms up at shoulder height. I'm going to pull upward through the inner thigh muscles. I'm going to press into the back pinky edge of the right foot and into up through the inner arch. I'm pulling up through the inner arch of the left foot. Then, as I start to reach forward, I engage through the bottom low belly muscles, like I'm trying to pull my belly button up toward my ribs. Find the place that's right for me. Now, your alignment might mean that your hand is on your leg. Maybe your hand is on a block or all the way to the floor. Again, so now on this side, when I lower my block down a little bit lower, because my front knee, my left knee is having a little bit of, there's something going on in my left knee right now, I'm noticing that my hand up a little bit higher on the block is actually serving that knee better. So now I'm going to align myself there. And again, I'm not doing, doing it the same as I did on the first side because I want to align myself to the most benefits for here. So now again, I'm trying to Squeeze, engage through my feet as if I'm trying to pull my feet back together. I keep a little bit of a bend in my left knee and spin my torso open so that I can look up at my right hand for one more breath in and a breath out. Now I'm going to come up and out and finish pose number three by bringing my feet back together and pausing and feeling again. Good. And just noticing. So there's no pressure or tension, no resistance in that knee. So I feel good about having aligned myself in a way that allowed me to experience a little less pressure there, a little less effort. So now I'm going to move into tree posture. I'm going to start off with my left leg on left foot on the ground, hands on my hips, and I'm going to begin by externally rotating the right hip so that I turn the knee to face out to the side. Then I'm gonna bring my foot up maybe onto my shin. Now we can start here. This might provide you the most benefits where you're really opening up that external hip, the right hip right now, and building strength in your standing left leg. Notice if that's the case for you. Maybe you bring the foot all the way up into the inner thigh. But again, if that then starts to close you in or you find that the balance is really unsteady, then moving the foot back down might be the right alignment for you today. Now, I don't want to pull the knee out to the side necessarily because for me, that's the wrong alignment for my hip. And what that does is it puts a lot of pressure in the standing leg. 
So again, now I'm going to roll the right inner thigh inward and then push my right foot and my left leg together. Now that feels like a strong, stable place and then I can even reach my arms up and overhead if I wish. For one more breath in and one more breath out. Then I bring the hip back into neutral alignment and lower myself down. Good, then I check in with that side and prepare to move to side two. Right foot on the ground, externally rotate the left hip and then begin to draw the foot upward. Now I check in. Here's my ankle, I, I check in, observe how that feels. Here, here is my calf, and then here is my inner thigh. And I can feel the difference all along the way, but I can still find ease all along the way. By then, once my leg is upright, I'm not gonna try to pull the knee out to the side and put all that pressure into the standing leg knee. Instead, I'm going to roll the left inner thigh downward, inward, inner rotation of the left inner thigh, and pull the foot and the leg, left foot, right leg, like there's magnets attached to them. And then, engaging through the low belly, I lift my arms up and overhead and enjoy the steady balance for one more breath in and out. And then arms come back down, foot to the ground, and I finish pose number four by feeling into that awareness. From here now, I'm going to make my way to the ground. I'm going to move into a pose called bridge. Now this is a pose, again, that can be really lovely and accessible in many different ways. So the alignment for bridge posture, make sure you have your block available. The alignment for bridge could be very restorative, where I'm going to take the block and set it on its lowest level down at the base of my pelvis, where my spine and my pelvis come together at the bony spot that we call the sacrum, okay? And then I might just let myself kind of hang out here. Now this is a really accessible way to get a more restorative style of the back bend. I could make it a little bit uh, more, a little more sensation, a little more sensation rich by lifting the block up onto its medium level. So now there's more of a stretch happening, now more, but it's still a passive stretch. Passive stretch, meaning I'm not using my muscles so much, I'm just letting myself drop in here. Now I can make it more active, you could make it more active with me. I'm gonna take my block out from underneath and set that to the side, and then now I'm gonna roll my shoulders down toward the ground, outer edge of the shoulders down, clasp my fingers together, press my knuckles toward my heels, and now I'm gonna engage outer edges of the hips. I'm gonna use the outer edges of the hips to lift upward. I'm gonna engage my inner thigh muscles, like I'm trying to roll the inner thighs toward the floor, and then try to press my shins straight forward. Now I'm definitely working more than I was when I was on the block, but I'm still able to breathe and find ease here. If this were too much for my shoulders, I could, or too much for my pelvis, I could hold on to my hips, or I could hold on to the edges of the mat if it's too much for my shoulders. And then I just wanna watch the back of my neck too and keep my eyes facing straight up and down making sure that I am keeping a nice space at the back of my neck. One more breath, and then exhaling, I'm gonna lower all the way down. Now I'm just gonna check in with myself, and I can feel that my legs are really doing some work here. I can feel, though, also that my back feels just fine. So that's, again, what you wanna check in with for that alignment. Did you push past resistance? Did you align yourself in a way that your body can accept? Now, I'm gonna rock up into an upright seated position again, take my legs straight out in front of me for a seated forward fold. 
And for seated forward fold, it can be really, really nice to sit on something, like a block or maybe a blanket, so that we don't get this big rounding in the lower back. Now, if that's where you are when you sit, make sure you sit onto something. If you have found that sitting down and not being on something allows you to extend your spine and you're not crunching or rounding, then maybe sitting on the ground is the right alignment. Now, for me here, I'm gonna start off, we're gonna flex the feet so that you're pulling toes backward and engage through your inner thigh muscles like you're trying to draw your inner thighs toward each other. Pull upward through the low belly and stretch your arms up and overhead. Take a full breath in, and then I'm gonna exhale, I'm gonna draw myself forward into the pose. Now, I can grab a hold of my feet and this alignment, I'm able to find ease. If I were not able to find ease here, however, then a strap or something that mimics a strap, like a, a robe tie or a necktie might be, might be accessible, make this pose more accessible. Now when I stay upright with the strap, I do feel a lot of ease in my lower back. No stretching across my back muscles. And so this might be really appropriate if you have anything going on in your spine or anything in your back, staying a little more upright might be better rather than reaching for the feet. If you are holding on to your feet or the strap, pull backward against your arms, engage your biceps like you're trying to bend your elbows toward the ground. Then start to press the belly toward your thighs, or again, maybe stay lifted if that's better for you. I can definitely feel some resistance here, so I'm going to start to engage again. Draw the inner thighs toward each other, engage my low belly to draw my chest forward, and then maybe there's a little more alignment that my body can accept with more ease. For one more breath in and out. Now, come all the way back up. And I notice pose number five and just check in with it there. Then, Finally, pose number six is reclined twist posture. So for reclined twist, I'm going to grab a hold of my blocks again and make sure that I have a block for each side. So I'm going to start off with knees bent, shift my hips to the left, and then take my legs up and over to the right with my legs stacked. Now this is one option with my left arm out to the side and I can look back at my left hand and you could too and that might feel great. Now sometimes if it's too much pressure on the top hip, placing a block between the knees can be a really nice way to ease things up a little bit. If you feel like you're not getting any stretch and you want to add on a little bit, maybe you kick the top leg out to the side, so left leg out to the right, and then my right hand can hold that foot while I look back at the left hand. Take a deep breath in. Now we want to align ourselves to ease here in the belly, so relax your belly, soften your jaw, relax across the upper back as much as possible. So again, if it's not possible, to relax your upper back down onto the ground, then maybe you put a block underneath that, lift that outstretched arm. So another possibility there for alignment. Let's go ahead and go to the other side then. So moving my hips, I'm gonna shift my hips to the right, drop my legs over to the left. And now on this side, interestingly, I'm noticing again, a little difference on this side where there is more of a pulling across my lower back and there's some resistance there. So, if I place the block between my inner thighs, that resistance has eased up and actually then my shoulder can relax a little bit more. So check in with yourself. Maybe you put a block between your knees. Maybe you put a block under your arm. Maybe you stretch your top leg out and grab that foot. Maybe you stay in that first form. 
Find the alignment that for you provides the most benefits, least effort, most ease. Breath in and breath out. And then from here, we're going to move into a short Shavasana for me. And maybe you have time in your day for a longer Shavasana. But I'm again, I'm going to align myself to the most luscious Shavasana I can find. So I'm placing the bol bolster. For me, this is so, feels so good for my lower back and my pelvis and my legs. Bolster underneath my knees. You could also roll up a blanket underneath your knees, potentially. And then I'm going to lay down from here. Now your Shavasana, you might just lay flat. Maybe you move to the wall for legs up the wall pose. Or maybe you have another favorite way to recline and let go. Once you're down on your back, take a full breath in. Open your mouth and sigh. Allow your whole body to align itself to rest now. And notice your body aligning to rest. What does that feel like? How can you most fully accept the rest posture? And you can stay there for as long as you have available. And I'm going to finish the practice now. So if you're finishing with me, my friends, I wish you a beautiful day ahead. And I thank you so much for playing curiously with me on the mat. Namaste.